Hey everybody, Jeremy here. So today I thought I would do two reviews in one for these two Joker figures from the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse line for Batman 3 Jokers. I did a review on the third Joker already and that one was The Comedian. Uh, that was a GameStop exclusive. If you want to see that video, check out the link up above the card or check the link in the description. It'll take you over to that video and you can check it out. I picked up these two at Target so they're available at retail right now and I feel like I'm gonna have similar feelings for both of these figures and that's why I just wanted to knock them out two in one. All right, so let's open up the box, take a look. So here we go, we got the clown and the criminal. I feel like these two figures are very different um, and not just in the way that they look. If you want something that's more posable, something allows you to get a more jokerized feel, then the clown is where you, is what you want to look at. If you like or prefer something that's more statuesque, more stern, more serious, then the criminal is going to be the way to go. And the comedian. See, the thing with the comedian and the criminal is that the way that these uh, figures are designed and the clothing that they wear, they make them kind of restrictive as far as your posability goes. It really feels like there's a certain way that you are supposed to pose them because there's just not a whole lot of motion. When you got the, the comedian, he has the camera, so you kind of you want him to hold that camera and it's going to be a pretty dead on kind of a thing. With the criminal here, it's similar. He's got this cane. You're going to be resting his hand on that cane. You're not going to do a lot of crazy poses with them, you know, because this suit that he's wearing restricts a lot of the midsection movement, you know. So because of this, you're not going to get a lot of like forward and back crunches and, and, and moving from side to side because you can't. It's too it's, it's covered. It's stiff. You can't do it. You turn them over on the back, you see that everything is enclosed, you know, nothing is open. So you don't you don't have that kind of a freedom. And as far as the other articulation goes, the arms are separate from the rest of the body. So you got more range when it comes to the arms. You know, as you can see here, there's more that you can do. And you can also, you know, rotate the wrist and then you got the little tilt of the wrist up and down. You got your elbow bend right there, you know, so. The arms, the arms are fine. The arms are fine, but you're not going to really be able to do much when it comes to the torso. And then also, let's try to get his arm back down to a point where he doesn't want to break. There we go. Speaking of break, we're going to get to that in a minute. Um, as far as the head motion goes, you know, you can get his head up about that much. Look down about that much. It's not a whole lot of head movement there, you know, so you might as well just kind of keep it straight. But I will say the majority of the detail is in the face and the face looks fantastic. He doesn't look like any Joker that you would really associate with a Joker. He's more natural looking, you know, you know, despite the green hair and the paler skin, he looks more like a regular dude. He doesn't have the super elongated chin or the exaggerated wide smile and the super arched eyebrows. You know, he's very stern, very normal, I guess. And I really do like that because it just gives another dimension to a Joker character that we traditionally don't see. And that's what McFarlane is good at. So that's where all the detail is. The money maker. Everything else is just kind of plain, you know, just straight up regular purple, a little bit of black on the shoes, a little bit of white here and there. You know, really nothing to write home about. But if we can go back to articulation for a moment, the big problem that I have with this guy is that he was broken right out of the box. His leg is broken and I kind of felt like that was going to happen as I was taking him out. There was a little bit too much daylight in uh, in those leg in the leg joint. And I thought, oh, I don't think he's going to make it. I went to move the leg to check out the articulation and it just fell off quite easily. I can't see anything that lets me kind of just snap it back in place. So I just kind of shove it in there. And by using the base that he comes with, I can just kind of keep him, you know, up, I can keep them intact. Uh, but even if I couldn't, there's not really much that you can do as far as the legs go. You can't move them this way all that much. You can't, you can kick it forward, you know, just a little bit. It's not even a lot. So you're not going to be doing a lot of leg articulation with this guy anyway, which is why I think that he uh, was really kind of more of an action statue more than anything else, especially compared to some of the other characters in this line, such as 
the clown. Now the clown is a lot more nimble because this is open. So because this is open, you have a lot more freedom with rotating to the left and right at the waist. You have a lot more freedom with bending. You know, it can't bend back and forth all that much, but you know, you can still get away with it more than you can with uh, with the criminal. And then his arms are also separate from uh, from the abdomen, so you know you can really kind of you, you can you can play around with it more you know you can get more jokery with it you know and just kind of do like weird stuff like that if you wanted to and you know i don't know if it's intentional or not for the clown to just be naturally more you know uh, erratic than than the criminal but if that's kind of the thing that they were going for then hey that's a good job because they nailed it again um most of the detail is going to be in the face this is kind of like that classic joker look that we are definitely used to by now and um you get a little bit more detail in the pants you see we got those black stripes there so it's not just flat purple and because from this jacket here and then the green um well, is this like a vest that he's wearing let's just call it a shirt green shirt i don't know i don't dress up much and then these other different colors for the pants there's there's different colors clashing here and that totally works because that's the joker the shoes however look like they're they look exactly the same and if they're not the same they're very very similar his legs seem to be using like a ratchet system for moving it up and down. I feel like it's not the same type of system that they used on the criminal. Uh, so I do like that. You can move it forward more. Let's just bend at the elbow or bend at the knee. You know, you can get some double jointed knees going on there. So it's, it's definitely a lot more that you can do with this particular Joker. And if you had like a spare flight stand and you want to make it look like something, Batman's punching him in midair and he's all like, ah, you know, you can do that. So he's a lot, he's a lot more nimble. Accessories that the uh, clown comes with this fish i don't know the significance of this fish but it has a really weird human-like face so that's a thing uh and then he also has this crowbar pretty plain basic crowbar we've gotten this before we got it with the comedian as well so nothing to write home about there those are the only two accessories that you get with them and then with every mcfarland figure you know you're going to get a base and you're going to get the little trading card on it as well so there you go. That's my look at the two uh, Jokers, the comedian and, well not the comedian, the clown and the criminal from McFarlane Toys. More of an action figure for this guy, more of a statue for this guy. I think that he would make a pretty good DC Direct statue. Uh, McFarlane controls that now, so um, I think this would have been better served as that, since you really don't get that much out of it as an action figure. But since they were going to be doing this line anyway, I understand they had to include all the Jokers, but uh, you win some, you lose some. I personally don't mind things that are more statuesque, but I know people do, so I just definitely want to make you aware of that. And then the other figures in this line, if you want to get them, are Batman, Batgirl, and Red Hood. And um, those are function more like traditional action action figures as well. So these two guys are going to go up on the shelf. I'm going to keep my eyes open for some more McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse stuff that's coming out in the future. And before I go, I know I have to say something about side eyes. He does have side eyes. The, the criminal does, but it's so, you can't even tell his pupils are so small. You can't really tell that he's looking off to the side. And then the clown does not have side eyes. So you can look straight forward with this guy. Looks good. All right. That's it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, I'm Jeremy. Talk to you later.